<laughs> I'm doing well. How you doing? Oh, I am doing fabulous. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. We appreciate you. your time. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's our pleasure. Well, we want to get right into it while we have the time. Right. While we have your ear. Can we do that? But Most definitely. Let's hop in. For sure. Okay. I'm, so now I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everybody for holding things up. You know, I apologize. No, 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 no worries. Thank you so much for getting it together and coming back on with us. We just, we appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> for sure. So, Bon, let's get into mm -hmm. some of this yummy old bowl talk, okay? We're yeah, ready. Yeah, let's. All right, let's but... So, <laughs> you play Barry on Tyler Perry's The Oval. Mm -hmm. um, and this show follows pretty much everything that is associated with, everything that goes on in The Oval Office, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so, uh, well, <laughs> I guess you could say that from Tyler Perry's point of view. Exactly, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a lot of twists and turns, but, you know, it's funny, we're kind of coming off the heel of the election, we're dealing with so mm -hmm. much concerning, you know, just our president and, and all of that, so it's just really interesting that we're getting a chance to talk about the Oval right now, but mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about Barry and his dynamic, his role on the series? Gotcha, of course. Um, so Barry Halson, he is uh, the only son of Richard Halson, who is the head butler in the White House. Yeah. Um, and so basically, Richard has been working in the White House for like three terms, you know, so that's at least 12 years, probably longer. Um, so Barry has been going to the White House to work and help his father out with things since since he was a young child, since he was a little boy. And then uh, one day when this new president comes in, of course, uh, things switch up the, the very first day that he's inaugurated because when Barry goes to help out, he gets accused of rape um, by the first lady, by the first daughter, by the first daughter. Mm -hmm. First daughter comes home from the inauguration party and basically uh, accuses him of rape, picks him out, wants to take him to his room, take him to a room, doesn't work out, she accuses him of rape. He gets out of that, and then basically the rest of the season, he finds out that his daughter, because uh, he has a daughter, to a mother who is part of this cult called the Rakadushi. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, I'm sure people keep up with them a little bit. They, yeah. they, are, a wild, they are a wild group for real too. Uh, so the rest of the season, Barry is literally trying to find his daughter. And uh, he makes a lot of rash decisions along the way and causes a lot of chaos. Um, so besides the first three episodes, he ain't got nothing to do with the White House. <laughs> He's, yeah. uh, but his, his father ends up getting fired and then rehired. So that's, that's the connection there. But Barry has his own storyline. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's pretty, it's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. um, your character, Barry, he also receives a little bit of flack about his temper. Um, <laughs> yeah, temper, seriously. What? And yeah, his temper and the way he treats Sharon uh, on the show, who is played by the lovely, beautiful Tisha Renee. That's our girl. Shout out to Tisha. Shout out to Tisha, <laughs> um, yeah. For sure. Um, do you think that Barry is justified in his actions, considering he is trying to find his daughter? Uh, <laughs> dude, I do not feel like he's justified with all his actions. Um, Barry's a young man, you know, he, he's a young man. He's, he's a little spoiled. And basically, besides the stuff that he might have did uh, to himself in his, pre in his life, he's had a really good life, like a really, he's been a good guy. Everybody talks about him. He's a good kid. Like they're, they're surprised that any of this ever happens right so when basically his whole world shatters in one night right his whole world shatters in one night he almost like goes to jail for 20 plus years for if not worse for possibly rape and then he comes home and then he finds his daughter kidnapped by because his mother didn't listen to him and his baby mother kidnapped his daughter his whole world shatters so do I say he's justified? He had he has some he's right in some ways, but I don't think he's justified for the extreme measures that he takes. 
Yeah. However, looking at it from a standpoint, when your whole life is shattered and the people that you thought were in your corner basically are not in your corner, you know what I mean? Um, it's hard not to take out your frustration on those people that are around you, especially if they're not helping the way that you thought they would. Wow. So I think I think he's really trying to cope with being such a good guy, and now he has to really change up what he's been doing because it gets taken away from him. That is a brilliant answer. I mean, it's Thanks. almost like you, you, like you said, his actions are not necessarily justifiable, but there is a level of compassion that you feel mm -hmm. for him because he is just honestly just enduring so much. Um, yeah. It's literally one thing after the other. And I feel like there's even a little bit of PTSD happening because how can you recover from yeah. Almost being accused of, you know, or being accused of rape, and you come home, now you gotta find your missing child. If there's a lot to handle there. Yeah, and and you know, Barry snaps a little bit. So actually while I was reading the script, I was thinking like, you know, I never judge my character, so I'm like, yo, this man really might have some mental issues going on with him too. And that stuff doesn't really get exposed until you really go through some serious adversity, you know? For sure, absolutely. So that being said, I think you almost touched on it a bit here. What would you say mm. is the biggest misconception about your character, Barry? Uh, I would say the biggest misconception about Barry is that he's he has like any malice in his heart, you know? He yeah. had, because he, he, he goes off on the people that, you know, really love him or are there for him, supposedly. You know, his mother, his girlfriend, uh, he snaps at his father. He doesn't, he's just not listening to nobody, you know? And I think the misconception is that he's just a hard-headed person with no good sense, no common sense, and that, you know, he's doing this on purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's really not that. He's just like, everything that y'all telling me isn't working because y'all not, at the end of the day, looking for my daughter the way I am. And I don't yeah. see that initiative from y'all either. So... I hear y'all, but at the same time, forget that. I'm going to do what I feel like I got to do because nobody, because I'm not getting where the results that I want. Um, yeah, I would think that's the biggest misconception. I mean, he's hard-headed, but he's not like, he's not doing it on purpose. You know, right. he's just he's just so locked in on where he's trying to go and like where he's trying to get that he just doesn't even see everything else for real. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I respect that. I respect that a lot. It may appear as reckless, but in his mind, like he is, you know, micromanaging his every move. He's doing what he thinks he got to do yeah. to make it happen. For know? sure. Yes, for sure. <laughs> for, so, for the most part, for the most part. There's, <laughs> the most part. there's some things he does. I'm like, yo, this doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Why yeah. would you do this? Why would you do this, dog? It's, yeah. But, so some things are, I'm sure you're probably like, dang, Barry. You really had to yeah. do it like that. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I'm like, dang, man, I really got to say this. Or I really got to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I got to find a way to justify it. But here it goes. <laughs> it's yeah. funny, though, because Tyler loves this stuff, man. He really loves it. Like, I'll, <laughs> we'll have a scene going on. And I'm like, so I'm supposed to say this? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, this is kind of <laughs> crazy. And he's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, just have to go yeah. there. Yeah, he loves he loves the 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 super dramatic and you know uh, the the explosion of emotions that come from certain things. So that's why he likes putting that stuff in there. For sure, I definitely think that is his bread and butter. That is, mm -hmm. if you are a Tyler Perry, Perry fan, you know to expect the just beyond the unexpected. Just so yeah, dramatic. the beyond reasonable. Right, it's not going to make sense, but somehow it's going to fit in the story. It's going to fit so. in the story. Now, speaking of beyond crazy, one of those yeah. just Tyler Perry classic moments, I want to talk about the scene where Barry drives his car into a pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. part. That part. Um, I don't want to give too many details away on why he does that mm -hmm. for those who have not yet seen it. But I do want to get your insight if you could maybe explain a little bit about how that scene was actually filmed. Mm -hmm. Um. That was actually uh that was actually a scene that we shot probably like at 
maybe 12 or 1 a.m. It was like the last end of the day. It was a long day. And so I was like, we got to shoot the pharmacy scene. And so literally, literally the whole front building was shattered, was going to get shattered, you know, and the whole inside. I mean, if you saw the scene, you saw how everything was just messed up everywhere. And we did that in one shot. We did that in one shot. So basically, me and Richard, um, if you recall, we pull up to the pharmacy. We see what's going on. And then, you know, Richard's talking to me and I'm getting revved up. You know, you can just see the devil coming into my eyes. <laughs> um, and it was funny because it was hot as hell in the car and I'm sweating and Tyler's like, just keep sweating, just keep sweating, just getting revved. Like I'm literally like making myself hot looking at the, whatever's going on. Yeah. And, um, and so we got that footage first. Uh, and it, it was funny because everybody out of, the whole, I feel like the whole studio came to watch the scene just because it was going to be crazy going in there. And um, so we shot everything outside first. I wanted to drive through the scene. I swear I wanted to drive through the, the, the front of the store. But Tyler was like, no, we have to put the stunt double in. But I was like, I can do it. He's like, no, you can't. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the stunt double comes in for me and Richard. Uh, and obviously they drive through and like they plow the place. Like, it's, it's ridiculous how much stuff was everywhere. Like, it was stuff hanging off the walls. So then we, me and Richard, get back into the car, right? We get back into the car, and um, there's glass everywhere. There's, there's the window shatterings everywhere. There's, there, it's a mess. And somehow he's like, all right, so you're going to have to go back to your football background because you have to make it from this truck to the counter, uh, to start fighting Kareem. <laughs> Tyler said, I'm not running my shirt up. Yeah, that's right. So we, I get back into the car, and um, he says, action, I have to, like, maneuver getting out the car, like, jumping over stuff, like, switching lanes and everything to get to the counter to tackle Kareem. It really felt like I was back in a football drill. Wow. Um, and, but really we shot all the action stuff up until the fight where I'm actually like start fighting Kareem. Everything else we shot in like one or two shots. Wow. One or two shots. Yeah. I almost slipped on the glass. Uh, I almost bust my tail in front of everybody, but I didn't. Shout out See, to the football. That's why Tyler Perry said you, are, you could not do this stunt. That's no, why I, I could drive you. a car. I could drive a car. He had to do the most dangerous part. I feel like the, the jumping over the stuff and like, Running on the daggone floor with the glass on it was harder than a driving. I but, guess. Yeah. If he just that's wanted to I'm... ensure that his his actors would be safe. But that sounds so incredibly intense. I mean. Oh, it was very intense. I guess the most intense part about it really was, like, you had to get yourself to that level to where your character would drive through a door, yeah. you know, a whole storefront. Yeah. And then come out and then get back in the car and get back to that same place where now you're ready to kill somebody, you know? Um, so throwing the stunt, that's why I didn't want to throw the stunt double in there. I wanted to do it myself. But that was, it was intense. And it was funny because if you ever talk to Javon, who plays Richard, Javon um, Johnson, who plays Richard on the show, he, he's literally, like, talking to me during this whole time. And I'm like, yo, I, I don't hear anything you're saying, Javon. I don't hear anything you're saying. Like, I'm, I'm literally, like, heated. He's like, you're making yeah. the car hot. You're making the car hot because your temperature. I'm like, I don't care. I mean, I'm going. So it was, it was a fun scene, but it was, it was a crazy, it was probably one of the craziest scenes I've ever done. Wow. That's, that's a testament to your acting ability, that you were able to kind of transition back into that moment, you know, even though it wasn't you behind the wheel, but you were able to still emote that same physicality, that same frustration as soon as you were back in the position. So, I mean, Thank kudos you. to you. You did that. You did Appreciate that. you. Thank you. <laughs> For sure. Now, We've heard from a couple of other actors that we've had a chance to interview, like KJ Smith, mm -hmm. uh, Lawrence H. Robinson. We've spoken to them a little bit about Tyler Perry's quarantine camp. Mm, um, camp quarantine, yeah. Yeah, I know that you've had experience there. Are you able to just mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your personal experience during Tyler Perry's quarantine camp? Yeah, uh, it was probably the most secure, um, thorough experience I've ever had, you know, with dealing with any type of sickness, any type of influenza where I, Tyler took every precaution 
possible to make sure that nobody was going to get this. And if they already had it, that they was going to be, you know, quarantined and be able to get back to work eventually if they were safe. Um, when I first went there, it really felt like stepping into Area 51. Um, they had the dogs there. Everybody had hazmat suits on. Uh, everybody was getting tested multiple times. Um, you know, our luggage was getting sprayed down. We was getting, we was getting uh, trolley to our individual homes individually, like just me and the driver, nobody else could come. Sprayed down when we got there. Everything was brought to us, was sprayed down. Uh, it, he just did it so thoroughly that it kind of set the precedent for the rest of the industry on what they need to do if they want to get back to work. Um, even like when we were trying to rehearse before, you know, before our scenes, we had to stay six feet apart. We had to have our, our mask on. It was, it was a big, it was very different. Uh, everything else around being on set was very different. When we actually was on set, of course we had our mask on and then right before action, we would take them off, do the scene and then put them back on. Um, Tyler actually walked around with this like Iron Man shield face mask. So he wasn't playing any games himself, but <laughs> <With a, laughs> he was getting his own oxygen and everything. Uh, so he wasn't playing. But yeah, every precaution necessary was taken for us to get back to work and get back to work safely. Um, so I appreciate it because uh, staying on the studio lot was different for me because last last year I, I stayed uh, downtown Atlanta. So we had to actually stay there. But they also provided games. They provided like movie nights. They provided food and bars. So uh, we still had a good time. Yeah, I think it was, I think I think he did it the most favorable way that it could be done to make sure that everybody was still safe. Wow, that's beautiful. I mean, that sounds like classic Tyler Perry. Like, he's yeah. always going the extra mile. He's always, you know, a charitable, just a kind-hearted, giving man. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for you to be a part of his team and to experience that, you know, that's kudos on to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, awesome. somehow, <laughs> somehow Tyler made it possible to for me to be part of history twice. Because, <laughs> like, the first year that we shot the Oval, you know, that was the first uh, shows that were being shot on the new studio, right? And then wow. this year, it's the first, the Oval was the second show to be shot during the pandemic. So working with Tyler, you kind of made history twice. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Full circle moment for you. So yeah, you are, you know, relatively new to the industry, you know, mm -hmm. we we're, we love your character. We're used to seeing you. We're used to seeing you by now. But what would you say that, what would you say you've learned about yourself so far based on the experience that you've gained so far and where you are today? What would you say that you have learned about yourself? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, what I've learned about myself during this journey is that uh, the work, uh, really teaches you about yourself you know you're gonna have to uncover some of your own trauma and uncover some of the things that you hide from or stay away from within yourself to really bring to your work and really do justice to your character so it's a very uh self-reflective art and craft and industry you know and dealing with a lot of people in this industry that are still figuring themselves out you know, you really start to see why uh, such great inspirational people come out of this because you really learn how to be a better person all around and tackle certain things that you have going on with you. So therefore you can be a better actor and do better work and bring that to your character. Um, so I just thought I could like, you know, come in here and just smile and be able to, you know, put on a good show and be all right. But <laughs> that's not gonna work anymore. You know, that's not gonna work anymore. And that's what Tyler told me. He said, you, you ain't gonna be able to do this off of looks alone. You know, you're gonna have to really dig deep and go somewhere sometimes. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned about this so far. Uh, and also that struggling and putting your time in and putting your work in is a very necessary step too. Mm, obviously hard work pays off, but really digging it out and staying the course and letting the journey and the process take its, take its course is going to be essential to your development, essential to your success. Wow, thank you for, that's a gem right there. That is oh, you're welcome. definitely a stone cold gem. I hope somebody caught it, I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful, thank, thank you for sharing though. That's, that's very honest, you know? 
Um, so here's a fun question for you. Mm -hmm. Are there any shows out that you loved or that you have seen yourself a part of, or better yet, any movie franchises that you love to be a part of? What are you thinking? Uh, as far as a show, uh, I love the morning show on Apple TV. Um, I, I just thought it was brilliantly made. Um, I love C. And I love the fact that the new Batwoman, uh, Javicia Leslie, uh, is, I hope I didn't pronounce her name wrong, but I love the fact that the new Batwoman is black, you know? Hey. Yeah. And I, I just want to be a, I just want to be a part of that somehow with the CW. Like, I just want to be in her universe somehow. Yeah. I don't know, as a villain, as another superhero. I just love the fact that they casted the first Batwoman as a black woman um, on that network. Uh, so shout out to them for that. Shout as out. far as as far as movie franchise, um, Bad Boy franchise, the Marvel franchise, uh, Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw franchise, yeah. I could definitely see myself in all oh, those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But honestly, for real, for real, I think I kind of realized this lately. Like my dream, my dream kind of role or kind of world to be in would be like a 007 type of role for me. I swear I would. I promise okay. you. I, I, I'm trying to tell you. I would do it justice. <laughs> I, <just laughs> I would do it, it justice. Yeah. Just, you know. No, oh, that's yeah. awesome. awesome. Especially about you being a part of the uh, Batwoman franchise. That's something I mm -hmm. can absolutely see 100%. And the 007. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad so, you can see it. If you can sure. see it, somebody else can see it. <laughs> For sure, for sure. I've seen the comments while we've been chatting. A lot of people have been asking, are you able to share, give us any insight as to when we can expect the Oval Season 2? I promise you if I knew, I would. Because I don't even know. I thought it was going to be out by now. I really thought yeah. it was going to be out by now. So I don't know if he's waiting for the holidays when, you know, everybody's coming back together. And because, you know, for some reason, the Oval is like a family show. And it's not a family show in my mind, but it's a it's a family show. Yeah. Like whole families get together and watch it. Yes. Literally. You're so right. Like, it's like how Scandal took off. That's not a family yeah. show. But the kids, the families moms, the watch moms, it. we're all watching Yeah. Family. So because of that, I think he might be waiting for the holiday time. Um, why did that happen? I think he might be waiting for the holiday time a little bit. Uh, so when everybody's back together, he might drop the first episode. You know, so I would say either around the holiday time or the beginning of the year. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. All right. Well, our fingers are crossed and we're looking forward yeah. to it. We are looking forward yeah. to it. Tyler knows how to leave off on a major cliffhanger and then keep you yes, hanging, he does. Keep waiting for a good full five months. Come yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Well, thankfully, he gave y'all sisters in the meantime, you know, so that's yeah. that's back. So shout out to the sisters cast for that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was gonna be back by now. Uh yeah. and I and I know season two. Season two is a lot. Mm -hmm. Season two is I'm a ready. lot. So. Ready. Ready, Everybody ready. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so we understand that you recently filmed King Richard, okay, opposite yeah. of Will Smith. Yeah, huh? yeah. Like, that's a huge uh, moment. Like, come on now. Uh, I was ecstatic yeah. about that. That was that was a huge opportunity. Um, working with Will was just on another level, you know, working with Will. Just seeing how he works, seeing how he gets ready for his scenes, being able to interact and talk with him. He's still he's still that 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 same guy from Fresh Prince. He really is. Like when the camera goes down and they they yell cut, he's literally the same Fresh Prince of Bel Air guy, man, that everybody knows and loves. Um, it's just that he goes into another mode now and he's at that, he's at the level in his career where he can just wear multiple hats so easily and so well. Um, but working with him was such an inspiration. Um, and, uh, it was, a, it was a whole different experience. We shot it out here in Compton. So it, and it was supposed to drop this year, um, Thanksgiving, but obviously because of COVID, it will drop next year, uh, Thanksgiving, 2021. And just a little bit about my, about my character, I play one of the main bad guys in the show uh, yeah. that have multiple rough encounters with Will. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun experience. 
That is so, so, so exciting. You know we're looking forward to that. What would you yes. say uh, is the biggest difference from the fast-paced shooting style that you're used to on the Oval? Mm. Uh, we just, we really just had time to fill these scenes out, you know, fill them out, work them a little bit, see what works, see what doesn't work, um, try things that we wouldn't be able to try before. Like if it was with Tyler, you know, we, we get in we, because we shoot so much. We don't really have a time to see, okay, I like that. I didn't like that. Let's keep that. Let's not keep that. We was able to do that obviously with uh, Warner Bros and Will. So that was probably the biggest difference. And, you know, we did, we did a lot of takes too, because they're mm -hmm. shooting from so many different angles. We're getting wise, we're getting close ups. Um, so the biggest, yeah, it was just the fact that we was able to fill these scenes out, actually milk them and get the best quality work that we was able to get um, in the time that we did. And if, and if we didn't get it that day, we will come back and do it tomorrow. It was like, okay, well, we still want to do some more work with this. So let's come back tomorrow and, and figure it out then. So just being able to have that time to really sit in these scenes and, and figure out what was going on with it. And to answer this question real quick, it's a drama. It's a drama. King Richard, um, Will Smith plays uh, Richard Williams, who is the father of Venus and Serena. And it goes about how he was training them back when they was in Compton before they moved to Florida. So it's going to wow, be some I good history, right? So I mean, I think I can speak for us all when I say we are looking forward to this. I mean, I feel like yeah. anything that Will Smith has his hands on or puts his name on, it's, it's going to be good. And you're now yeah. part of that. So congratulations to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. For sure. So this is probably going to be my last question. And I got to tell you, it's probably okay. one of my favorite questions to ask. Um, uh, snap. Okay. Because it's a little bit personal. You know, we get to hear your heart a bit in this question. So I love that. Um, right. Giving each other our flowers while we're still here is probably one of the newest trends. I guess you can say I've been seeing it on Instagram. I've been seeing it on Facebook where we're just saying, you know, I'm going to give this person their flowers while we're, they're still here because I care about them. I love them and I want them to know it right now, you know, while mm -hmm. I can tell them. So if mm -hmm. you could give any soul person, they don't have to be famous, anyone that you know, their mm -hmm. flowers, you know, who would that person be for you and why? Uh, if I had to name one, um, it would, it would be my mother. And I say that because I haven't, you know, really spent that much time with my mother since I probably graduated from college, just cause we've always been on opposite sides of the country and, um, we're a little bit alike. So she's very independent and I'm very independent. So Sometimes our conversations is like, you know, you good? I'm good. You good? You good. All right, cool. I'll talk to you later, you know? Uh, and I just feel like if I, I, I would want to give her a flower to let her know that despite um, sometimes not talking as much as we should or as often we should or not always acting like mother and, and mother and son, that I truly appreciate her and love her um, and that she is a... You about to get me emotional here, y'all. Like, because she, she's such a strong black woman, and I and I definitely wouldn't be where I am without her. Cool. Wow, that see, yeah. that's why this is my favorite question because, like I mm -hmm. said, we get to hear your heart, and that was so raw and beautiful. So, thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Shout out to your beautiful mother. You're welcome. Shout yeah, out shout to out to you, Ma. Love you. <laughs> well, thank you. You've been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. This thank evening. you. I had to make up for, you know, the technical difficulties and being all late and stuff. <laughs> no, you are perfect. You killed it. Where can we follow you on social media? Make sure that yes, we all know that. So my uh, Instagram is at VHEB official, V-H-E-B underscore official. Uh, same thing for my Twitter. Uh, and my website and YouTube is Vaughn.Hebron. Perfect. Well, yeah, VaughnHebron.com and at Vaughn.Hebron. Perfect. This has been beautiful. You guys, make sure that you're following Vaughn. Make sure that you're tuning into The Oval. Stay tuned for his new film next year, King Richard, alongside Will Smith. So many great things in store. God. <laughs> um, and make sure that y'all are following Black Cinema now. And follow me, your girl. Shout April out to Jim. Black Cinema now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, take care of yourself, Vaughn. We hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And you take care of yourself as well.
Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye. Right.